Before we jump into today's show, I've got a really exciting announcement to make. The autumn cohorts for Start Your Podcast group program are now open. There are five dates between September and October, and it's a six-week program that will get you launched before Christmas. So if podcasting was on your to-do list this year, if you really want to get your podcast up and done by the end of 2023, then come and join me for one of those cohorts and let's make it happen. I have a free masterclass available for you called Understanding the Power of Podcasting. You can go over to donnaede.com forward slash masterclass, watch the masterclass, and get access to that enrolment. I hope to see you in one of the autumn cohorts very soon. That's donnaede.com forward slash masterclass. Let's get back to the show. Welcome to the Society of Professional Wedding Vendors podcast. I'm your host Donna Ede and in part three of our self-care mini-series we're speaking to Syra Hassan. She arranges meetings with your subconscious mind to help you heal traumas, stresses and anxieties. She does this through her cognitive behavioural hypnotherapy training with additional qualifications in EMDR. In this episode, we're looking at how we can get our minds straight with some techniques and it's a fantastic episode. So let's jump straight in. everybody. We have the lovely Syrah Hassan with us today. Hi Syrah, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. The reason that I've asked you to come on today is because you focus on cognitive behavioral therapy and hypnotherapy and I thought it would be something that could really help my listeners with the situation that we are in. If you aren't aware, which I'm sure you are because you know me, (laughs) so if you're not aware, the uh, wedding industry has basically been completely devastated as has the events industry because of COVID-19. Obviously, we are used to having lots of people together at our events and that has completely stopped and it has put a strain on the industry and on the vendors. So first, I thought we would talk about um, how we could help move people from maybe these negative thoughts and feelings that they are having and put them into a better, more positive place with their thoughts. It is a difficult time, honestly, uh, for everyone in different ways. Young people are looking for jobs, uh, fresh graduates, they can't find work, university students, you name it, and obviously the event industry. And and this was an industry that was thriving. And uh, so many people that are connected to the wedding industry all over the world. And the first thing that I would suggest to these people is self-compassion. Please take care of yourself first and then find out where the anxiety is in your body. Give it a shape give it a color, and then we can deal with it. The first thing that we teach, something very boring, something we all can do, but we don't, is breathing. Mm. And that is the first step in every therapy. You need to learn how to de-stress with breathing. And there are many ways to breathe. A lot of people, myself included, When I started training as a hypnotherapist, we were asked to breathe through and engage our stomachs when we breathe, which when people do, people do yoga and Pilates, they're trained to do it as well. And the first thing that somebody said was, oh, Syrah, you're not doing it right. And normally you have to put your chest, uh, you know, your one, one hand on your chest one hand on your tummy, and then see whether you're a chest breather or you're a diaphragmatic breather. And I was not doing it correctly, (laughs) but I could really relax if I just, if somebody said, take a deep breath, and I did, in whichever way I found easy, I did de-stress. But then I was stressing more about, am I doing it correctly? (laughs) So I feel that we get into the minutiae of you need to do it this way or that way. Mm -hmm. Just relax and breathe in, hold and breathe out, whichever way you you can. And connect a word with it. So when you inhale, you can just say to yourself, peace, hold and relax. Or just set up your own little rhyme. I inhale, love myself. 
or something like that a three word thing give your anxiety a color so when you breathe out you are breathing out that color and that all the tension is draining away from your body so a lot of people say when you start training do it for 20 minutes every morning but i feel uh, in my experience if you can do little minutes even be aware of your triggers go back and see where is it that i start feeling anxious mm. maybe the room in the house maybe it's some person maybe, maybe it's getting on social media absolutely absolutely so if let's say if it's going on social media a very quick trick is put a question mark on on a post it and uh, just pin it on your laptop so what does that do that suggests why am i feeling tense that question what is the question why am i feeling tense what's the big deal just a question mark yeah pin on your paper, you know posted on your on your laptop or your uh, any device and you ask yourself why am i tense it's not a big deal it's not the end of the world breathe in hold and relax there you go i can um, fall asleep on this podcast <laughs> it's so relaxing <laughs> i'm breathing too much <laughs> breathing techniques that we can use anytime anywhere discreetly is uh, there's one thing called box breathing so let's say you go up four breathe in hold for four that's the top of the square come down exhale for four and the last one exhale further for four so it's a very quick way you can use your mobile phone you can draw it on your lap discreetly under the table if people are stressed about exams they're stressed before an event just do it very discreetly and you'll see that it starts working you know that you have that box your mm. go to I think that's something that is it firefighters or, or some one of the emergency Absolutely. nurses Fire use fighters. box breathing. Exactly, that's brilliant. You know, a Navy SEALs in in the states, mm. uh, firefighters, policemen, they all train to box breathe. Mm. And if it's and good it's, enough for them, people, it's good enough for us. I mean, you can't get more in danger than that. <laughs> Seal of approval. <laughs> Absolutely. And another thing, um, Donna, and there are little things that you can do. to physically relax your body mm -hmm. because uh, everything is connected isn't it yeah your bodily sensations are connected to your thoughts and your emotions and your behaviors so everything is connected and i'll come to that and that's what cbt addresses so a very quick way of actually physically relaxing your body and putting it in the rest and digest mode because in what is anxiety it's fight and flight right mm we quickly you in fight and flight mode you act your body feels it's in danger just because of a thought mm -hmm. worry about the future rumination something that bothered you in the past they all activate your fight and flight response so very quickly when you want to rest and digest what you do is you activate the vagus nerve which connects you you know all your major organs in your body and it's really easy to do so the first thing that you can do and you can do many things to activate your vagus nerve the first thing you can do is Rub your hands for ten minutes, ten seconds, just ten seconds, and then put one hand on your forehead as if you're checking your temperature, and then put the other hand on top, and just breathe, and that will start the activation. Another thing, because the vagus nerve can go from behind the ear down to your abdomen, and remember, your gut is really intrinsically involved in anxiety and emotion. Mm. If you let's say hum, you're activating the vagus nerve. Mm. So when you say Om. in yoga it's the humming sound that's that's de-stressing you so you can hum you can gargle because the throat is connected and activate the vagus nerve you can put your face in iced water that will quickly activate it. yeah Try. yeah <laughs> otherwise, otherwise remember that when even in period um uh, when you read period books or in period dramas what did the ladies do if they thought that they would swoon they would splash cold water on their wrists right yeah that was the vagus nerve just you know calming your system down mm. after is a huge uh, uh, vagus nerve de-stressor uh, as we all know but we mm. never connected with the vagus nerve etc so all these things little things that you can do and breathing up of course and meditation and mm. prayer so deeply spiritual people they find solace in prayer and meditation 
all of these things are, you know, activating your vagus nerve and physically helping you to relax. And that's yes. great because I think a lot of us, we think, oh, if I just think differently, it's going to make a difference. And for some people it does, it, it can instantly yeah. change if you, you just change your thoughts and it changes your feelings. Yeah. But these things are actually practically changing what's going on in your body. And I think Absolutely. that will be a real help to a lot of people. And you know, Donna, a lot of times, um, you know, with people getting panic attacks, let's say, what is a panic attack? Your heart is racing and mm. tremors and so on. And sometimes we get these bodily symptoms. So let's say we're sitting there, we're watching a play or whatever, anything on TV, or we, we think our headspace is relaxed at the time. And then we start getting these symptoms, mm. like the, the, you know, the heart and, and, and so on. And then that clenching of the stomach and then what we do is we we try to fit an anxiety into it why am i getting this uh, heart racing why is my stomach clenching there must be something and then we try to fit in an anxiety or a worry in mm. that you know to define the yeah. body system. there's got to be a reason yeah there's got to be a reason and then we're constantly doing that mm. and the best thing to do is just to say this is my my overactive brain trying to play tricks on me Mm. And ignore, just don't listen to it. I'm not going to listen to my body. And just take a few deep breaths, think of something else and relax. Because sometimes it's just that. Sometimes it doesn't have to be a reason. And we give it a definition. Oh my God, it must be a premonition. It must be something going on. Something at the back of my mind is worrying me, etc. And just don't listen to your body. Mm. And see what happens. Um, but breathing, honestly... It's so simple that a lot of my clients feel that um, it's too simple to work. Yeah, I was going to say a lot of people would think that, yeah. I breathe Uh, all the time. How's that going to help? All the time. It's portable. I mean, it's a God-given thing and uh, we take it for granted. Actually, What we can do is we can set up a worry time because COVID times, I mean, it's, it's not as if it's all in our heads. I mean, this is happening to us. It's happening in real time. But constant worrying is just going to make us ill, right? So what you can do is you set up a worry time. For example, I mean, it sounds, again, it sounds uh, trite or it sounds uh, very prescriptive. So let's say from 9 to 9.30, that's my worry time. That's when I'm going to sit with myself. I'm going to sort out, maybe make a list, take a journal, draw a line in the middle. These are the problems that I have. And then you sort them out into the ones that you can do something about Mm. and the ones that you really can't, right? And the ones that you really can't, you have to accept. And acceptance is a very nice place to be in your head. Mm. Sometimes just let go and accept. But the things that you can solve, uh, what I use is a really good silver technique. It's very quick to do. And I want to share it with people who are listening. So what you do is... In your mind, you sit back and you project a screen, uh, let's say about six feet away from you. And what you do is with your eyes closed, you try to look up at the middle of your forehead or just 20 degrees. Raise your eyes with your eyes closed, 20 degrees up. But I like to imagine that there's a dot in the middle of my forehead and I'm looking at that. Mm-hmm. On screen one, the one that you're projecting right now, Project all your worries, all your problems, everything, maximize it, all the emotions that go with it, everything that's like really bothering you, gnawing at you, everything related to that problem, just throw it on the screen, right? Mm. Whilst your eyes are uh, looking up at the middle of your forehead and do it at your own pace. Everything, maximize that emotion that goes with it, the worry that goes with it. And then let's imagine you slide that screen to the right and you project the second screen, which is 15 degrees to the left where the first screen. And then you project all the solutions that you can throw at that problem. Really do that. Remember, your eyes are still 20 degrees up. Yeah. And the second screen is so many degrees. Second screen, (laughs) left signifies the future, Mm. right signifies the past. So this screen, second screen, you're throwing all the solutions that you can, uh, you know, uh, think of at the moment that could or might solve your problem. Then fade that second screen, slide it to the right of your mind. And then again, 15 degrees to the left is your third screen. On your third screen is your goal or ideal self. 
Mm. or your ideal life, what you would like, you know, at the end of the problems, if the problems solve themselves, what would it look like? What yeah. would I be like? Uh, what would be the repercussions, all the positives that a solution would get you? So project all of that, the emotions on the screen, etc. And then just take a deep breath, relax your eyes and come back. And you'll be surprised, Donna, I could do that in the middle of a session. You would think that this would take a long time. Mm. The way somebody's mind works, you can do it really quickly. So let's say you're just sitting there, um, you're out, you're amongst people, you're bothered about something, you can just, you know, quickly do it and pretend that you're thinking. Yeah, just take so a moment. <laughs> take a moment to yourself. And quickly do that. You'll see, you know, uh, what wonderful insights you get. Because there is a reason why you were raising your eyes. It's because it quickly takes you to the alpha level, which is a deeper consciousness. Mm. And that's, that's what we were doing with the degrees, the 20 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> get your protractors out, everybody. <laughs> No, it's fascinating though. And I think something that is that simple and I've used visualization a lot in my, what I do on a daily and, you know, I believe in vision boards and, and putting everything out there. And I think the power in visualizing something and visualizing the result you want is really, really powerful. And it's hard to do when everything is doom and gloom and it's hard to do when everybody's being negative around you. But I think it's really important to to take some time. And like you say, it doesn't have to be like hours and it really ties in nicely actually with what I was saying with Catherine last week, which was about sort of building up your exercise by only doing sort of five or 10 minutes a day. The idea of sitting there and meditating for half an hour is just like most people would just shut off and just like I haven't got time for that but you know just taking a couple of minutes when you first wake up to do some of these breathing techniques that Sarah's been taking us through just set you on a different path for the day um just taking that that vision that you've just taken us through there with the screens if you did that when you first woke up of everything that's just sort of sitting there or before you go to bed because I know a lot of people for me especially I get that whirring when I sort of lay down at nights when everything stops suddenly everything that's bothering me starts to run around and that screen um technique is has got to be a really good thing to do at that point just to sort of yeah. get it all out and and to sort of reset yourself so you can have a good night's sleep another tip of rumination and now that you mentioned it donna because our thoughts are racing at the time especially when we are trying to sleep everything mm. crowds in our mind right so another visual thing that you can do to actually slow down your thoughts is imagine yourself jogging mm. so your thoughts are also jogging with you and they're yeah. just going around very fast in your head and then slow down to a trot then to a walk then slow down your walking and then you have stopped and then you sit down and then you lie down and then you align with yourself with actually lying down in your bed mm. There you go. So, and probably uh, do a countdown as you do it and use your deep breathing techniques because that's going to activate, you know, your vagus nerve and it will help you sleep as well. Mm. So try that when, you know, you, your thoughts are going haywire and just running. Uh, another trick, trick that we can use, you know, the merry-go-round. In yeah. The park. So you spin it and that's how our thoughts are spinning. Definitely. And then it goes down because nobody is, is spinning it anymore mm. physically and at on its own you know own pace it slows down and stops yeah that's such yeah. a good idea actually yeah i love that and it, it's not a one size fits all guys it's not you know Absolutely. all of these are going to work for you but if you try these things and i mean most of these things are are instantaneous so i was saying you know you'll instantly feel the relief and i felt it you know um i go to networking meetings with Sarah, and she'll sometimes come on and just do a breathing exercise with us and, and all of us on the meeting start breathing and then all of a sudden i just feel so much more relaxed so those kind of things do work and you may think like the visualization side of things might not be for you and it might not be but try it out and see Uh, don't just completely dismiss it because you never know when the right thing is just going to click with you and and it's just going to help you and anything that is looking to help you isn't a bad thing to try a snippet Um, I was reading somewhere a therapist had shared uh, her client's case study and she said uh, let's say we tell the clients to breathe and relax 
And whenever they have ruminations or, you know, where their thoughts just take hold and don't go away. And they said, yeah, we tried that and it didn't work. We did it 10 times or we did it, uh, you know, 20 times, it didn't work. And she said, uh, this was, this is actually, it's something very interesting. She said, do it a thousand times because you're ruminating a thousand times. Mm. You have to make a habit of breaking that cycle. Yeah. So if you're ruminating a thousand times, it's not the fault of the, the breathing that it's not working. Mm. It's because you're giving up. So don't give up and just make it a habit that as soon as you start ruminating, you're going to stop the thought. You're going to maybe switch the thought. You're going to slow down and you're going to activate your vagus nerve. And there we go and make it a habit all through the day. Mm -hmm. Rather than, as you said, you know, have a nice 20 minute chunk of, of exercise, as, as Catherine had said. So the breathing, you can breathe in just one. Breathe in, relax, breathe out. Give it a color, give it a shape, um, align a name with it that brings you relaxation. So may I ask Donna, what word present represents relaxation um water i love wow. I, I get a lot of peace i've got a pond in my back garden with a waterfall the rain is actually coming down now which i'm finding yeah. very relaxing i love water so that just that's relaxation yeah. to me so uh, and and what color uh, would signify release of tension for you blue brilliant so when you breathe in just say water and when you exhale just imagine a mist of blue releasing through your mouth very slowly there yeah. you have it. and also give your anxiety a shape and a color and maybe a face so that you can shrink it you can throw it you know outside the room make it a cartoon character give it a squeaky voice mm. you know pummel it punch it slap <laughs> very relaxing yeah well I think I think this is true as well because a lot of us I know that there are a lot of people out there that feel like if I can't see it it's not real you know God's not real I can't see him and, and yeah, things like yeah. that that come up and you know they can feel like this with it you know if they were just to breathe it's not doing anything for me but the the visualization part of it, giving it a color or giving it a shape, giving yeah. it a, a, a something to be in can yeah. be so powerful for you to actually see what it is that you're mm -hmm. trying to get rid of out of your life or trying to sort of take in, whether it's uh, your relaxation or your anxiety. So um, yeah, I think that's a really, really good idea. We've kind of covered getting ourselves into that positive place with using some of these fantastic techniques that you have given us. Thank you so much for that i wondered if you could just go into a little bit of an explanation now of what it is that you do and if you can talk to us about hypnotherapy and how that can work because i think people immediately when you say hypnosis they yeah. think of the magician on the stage making me cluck like a chicken and nobody's going to make me do that and i know what you do is completely different to that so if you want to explain a little bit about that that'd be great what we do as clinical hypnotherapists we empower our clients. Mm. It is a very collaborative process. And it is the opposite of somebody taking control of you and controlling your thoughts. And, you know, we sort of magicians. Somebody will ask me, will I get stuck in hypnosis? No, you will not. <laughs> because hypnosis, it started in 1857, I think. There was a, a Scottish physician called James Braid who studied Eastern philosophy and understood that our thoughts are very powerful. Mm. So he started doing it, uh, you know, using techniques, created techniques and started using them in his, you know, in his medical work. And he obviously is before Freud, etc. What people sometimes in their heads, when they think of hypnotism, they're thinking of mesmerism and so on. And obviously stage hypnosis is, it's a gimmick. Mm. Sometimes they have plants in the audience. And when people think that they can be hypnotized or made, made, you know, made to pluck like a chicken, etc. If they're suggestible to it, they will do it, etc. But clinical hypnosis is something very different. Yeah. In clinical hypnosis. So first I'll talk about CBT. What CBT is, it's, it was started in the 1960s. Yeah. And what it does is it's in more interested. It was a sort of a reaction to psychoanalysis, a Freudian psychoanalysis. And they want to focus on what is maintaining your problem now. How are your thoughts? How are your actions, your behavior? How are your emotions interrelated? So what CBT does is you separate the, the emotions, you separate the behavior, you separate the thoughts. Then with the client, you sit down and you assess how the thoughts, let's say irrational thoughts, 
are coloring your your behavior and affecting your emotions mm -hmm. for example in cbt we look at how your clients are catastrophizing no all or nothing this the world will end something terrible will happen or black and white thinking there's no gray there yeah mind reading this person is thinking that i'm you know, I'm a very foolish person. It's like you it projecting and then you um, you internalize it as yeah. true. So what CBT does is break that vicious cycle of thought and how it affects the behavior and emotions, etc. And give you coping strategies. Very structured, there are a lot of forms, etc. And how hypnosis, uh, it's not even an adjunct, it's integrated. So what I'll, what I'll do is I'll assess the personality of the client. First, we'll psychoeducate. What is CBT? What is clinical hypnosis? Clinical hypnosis is nothing more than focused relaxation. Honestly, you can do the same work in imaginal exposure. It's a lot of visualization, yeah. a lot of suggestions, and you just relax the client. They can hear you. They don't go in a trance. They can hear you. Anything that they don't like, they will reject subconsciously. And we put that in the script. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're always in control always and so it's the opposite cbt doesn't focus on childhood that much they're more interested in the now mm. i feel personally that most of the stuff that is happening to us today is somehow related to our childhoods and our inner child so i do address this so i've created my own toolbox yeah so I, have, I have clinical hypnosis but i also do emdr which is uh, trauma-based and and i do past life regression therapy only if the if the client is open to it and actually asks for it because I don't want those, you know, my views or my thoughts on it. It's just, it's, it's another way of addressing trauma. If you can't find the origin in childhood, another way of assessing where could it, you know, the origin of yeah. the trauma. And um, when you put it out on your website that I can do this, it's always the client who will ask for it. I will never suggest it. Yeah. Because I am aware that people have different cultures, different belief systems, etc. So it has to come from the client. And honestly, uh, unless a client is motivated to change, none of these will work. Which is sad because in a lot of depressed clients, the will to seek help is missing. I have this client uh, um, who uh, had, uh, you know, had a panic attack while she was driving on the motorway, and uh, for twelve years. She could not drive on A roads, on dual carriageways, on motorways. Yes, Obviously, that affects your whole life. We've had a bit of CBT uh, separately, hypnosis separately. But uh, what we did, uh, obviously everything, her name is confidential, but yeah. I can just show you what we did that worked so well was this exposure therapy in CBT, virtual exposure. If you have a phobia, flight phobia, etc., you can't go on a flight every day, you know, not even <laughs> not like that. So, um, so you, uh, you can't expose your clients to the phobia. But what you can do is you can do virtual exposure. Mm. Do it in a safe place because the therapist is there. Now, when you combine virtual exposure and do it with hypnosis, where you're working at a deeper level, it's so powerful that honestly, Donna, she was taking A roads after three sessions. Wow. And I got a very excited voicemail from her. Sarah, I've just driven to central London. I've just parked the car in Regent, uh, you know, Regent Park. And you're the first person that I call. Oh my God, she must have been so proud of herself. Because it was so powerful. I just, I, 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 I started crying, honestly. Mm. Yeah. Because awesome. even sometimes you can't believe that the results can be so powerful. But obviously she was motivated to change. Mm. Yeah. But, um, so that's how CBT and hypnosis and every other therapy that I use, they, they, I integrate it so that it truly matches your client's personality. Mm. It's a process which has to suit the client. So honestly, it's totally opposite of making you do something that you don't want to do. It works on a very deep level because there's some things that we don't face consciously that we get insights into when we are doing clinical hypnosis, EMDR for trauma, etc. From what you've just said, I had, I reached out to my audience and I asked them if they had any questions for you. And one of uh, my members actually came back and said, 
I don't think I can be hypnotized. I don't think that would work for me. And I think possibly she's sort of got it in, you know, what we see on TV. From what you've just said, it sounds like as long as you're open to it, anybody can benefit from this sort of deep relaxation hypnotherapy. Would you say that's right? Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing that I do if somebody comes now, it's a bit more difficult to do it online, but it's just a way of checking how suggestible your client is to hypnotherapy. So what I have is the pendulum, you know, that is, it signifies hypnosis for many people mm. and you just give it to them. So they hold it very still, the pendulum. And I ask them, tell your mind to uh, move the pendulum either clockwise or anti-clockwise. And that really convinces them. And it shows me how suggestible they are to start with, to start mm. with. That's the operative word. Because everyone can be hypnotized unless you have a condition called, I had written it down here, uh, aphantasia. I have a story with that as well. So unless you have that where you can't visualize at all, and it's a condition that affects 2% of the right. population. When you're reading books, you can't imagine. You can't imagine anything. You can't visualize. And I really, I mean, feel really sorry for this. So uh, you can be trained to be more suggestible as you go along. Mm. So some people are very suggestible and some people have this kind of a resistance that uh, when you keep coming to your therapist, you, you know, so let's say I'll do more CBT and I'll do some hypnosis work. And over time, over a couple of three or two or three sessions, you're getting there. Even I thought I'm not suggesting that you, you feel that you, you know, kind of nobody can hypnotize me. You're like, it's a sort of a power game. Mm. And, uh, so I was in that frame of mind when I started training and we used to, uh, you know, train with our, our classmates, basically, when we were doing it in college. But the first time, Donna, that my partner managed to elevate my arm, just, it just went up like this. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so coming back to the aphantasia, uh, I do corporate work as well, where I go in and do stress management training and whatever they you know, they asked, and it was a startup and younger people are more open to hypnosis, honestly. Mm. So I was a bit surprised that about 20 people attended that workshop, although it was uh, at the end of the work day, it was around 5.30. And there were 20 people on the table. Uh, and I was like, I was really impressed because you really need to be open-minded. Yeah. To be, you know, be open or vulnerable enough to be hypnotized in the workplace. Yeah. So there was this uh, young guy and he said, you know, I can't be hypnotized. So should I stay on or should I go back to my work? And I said, you, you can be, don't worry about it. And he said, but I actually can't. Mm. I have this condition, Fantasia, and I can't. And I said, can't you even read books and imagine? He said, no, pictures don't form in my mind. And honestly, mm. then I had to let him go. And I said, I hate to say this, but this probably won't help you in any way. And uh, also, when you're doing group hypnosis, one person whose energy is not on the same level in the sense that they're not getting hypnotized or they're getting restless, etc., they might affect the energy of other people in the room. Mm. So I said, it's better that you go. And later on, I found out he was the CEO of that startup. And I said, okay, <laughs> I wish I hadn't done that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so... So uh, answering to the, the question, unless she is really physically not able to visualize, we can get there because all you need to do is relax and it's focused relaxation. And the same thing that we do in hypnosis, you can do light hypnosis, you can deepen it, you can just do imaginal exposure. Once you get, you know, you um, are habituated, let's say to my voice and the modulation, uh, what happens after a few times is, you just tap your, uh, your uh, client on the shoulder. Okay, close your eyes and you're deeply relaxed. And that's it. You mm -hmm. can use. And a lot of people, would you would be surprised, hypnosis is used a lot in dental surgery nowadays. Have you heard of that? Yeah, I have actually, yeah. yeah. Can you imagine? I mean, that's the worst possible pain you can imagine, right? Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of dentists are training in hypnosis, in hypnotherapy and hypnobirthing. I mean, these, these are extreme, uh, you know, situations where there is extreme pain. Yeah, yeah. You can't get it worse than, you know, childbirth and getting your tooth extracted. Mm, yeah. So mind, mind over matter, uh, that's the amazing part. So uh, that, that's how uh, CBT and hypnosis are integrated. Anyone uh, other than a physical condition, if you can imagine, you can get hypnotized. And you can choose CBT 
whether you just do imagine, you know, it without getting into deeper hypnosis, mm -hmm. just relax and imagine. And that's it. And that, that works the same way because it has to align with your belief and what you're comfortable with and your personality. Honestly, yeah. that is so good. Thank you so much for that, Syrah. And I th just wanted to touch on um, a point that that you said in there, where you were talking about how people can um, get depressed, um, sort of seek the help that they need. And I sort of alluded to this in some of my social media posts recently, where I was saying, you know, reach out if you are part of the wedding industry and there are colleagues that you know that you've worked with a lot just reach out to them just have a phone call have a cup of tea have a zoom meeting Absolutely. just check in with them because it is that kind of thing where you feel like you're suffering alone and you do get in these dark places and sometimes all you need is somebody to to have a chat with and make you feel like you're not alone and that can be enough for somebody to go okay, maybe, maybe there is hope and maybe I can go and get some help. So Syra, thank you so much. We have come to the end of our time together, but I am going to link all of your details in the show notes so that people can come over and connect with you. Can you just tell us quickly where people can find you? I'm online now. Um, and um, uh, so I have a website and I'm also running um, a series of events dealing with toxic emotions and I can send you the details. So yeah. we're dealing with shame, blame, grief, jealousy, anger, and fear. So if any of your clients want to, um, you know, uh, buy a ticket is just 20 pounds it's, it's going to be a power pack 90 minutes of dealing with the emotions talking about it going into solution circles so you, yeah. you know yeah. that there are other people there and then a mini therapy session at the end just to start the process or to give you the skills or just to open that you know the, the secrecy and shame behind a lot of the fears that we are holding or, or the attendant emotions the toxic emotions that especially this covid time is stirring yeah. up yes Definitely. And honestly, uh, seek out help. Uh, just talk to anyone, as you said, and also have a safety plan that if you get anxiety gets too much for you, what are you going to do? What, just make it a habit. Write it down somewhere. I'm going to reach out to so and so when my anxiety is too much for me to bear. I'm going to call a friend. I'm going to call a helpline. I'm going to you know the Samaritans, whatever. Have a safety plan. Step one, I'm going to call this, 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 this. Step two, I'm going to do this. So have a plan before you get into that very deep state of hopelessness. You need a plan. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Syrah. It has been an absolute pleasure to have you on the podcast. Mm -hmm. And I really, really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Donna. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's it for this week, everybody. I will see you again next week when we are talking to the lovely Victoria Bell. Don't forget to hit those stars and leave a review of the podcast where you listen if you found value in what you heard today. It's a free way you can help the podcast reach more people just like you.